You've seen it in movies and TV shows, but 3D replication is no longer a thing of the future. Today, we're heading to Dupe to step inside their Duplicator full body scanner for a custom action figure that's all you. So walk us through the process that begins when someone walks through the door of one of Dube's retail locations, all the way to unboxing what people are calling a 3D selfie. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty simple. Basically, customers come into one of our locations. We have two in New York, one in LA, one in San Francisco. Uh, they can check out some of uh, the samples that we have of past customers. Uh, they figure out what their pose is, what's gonna be fun, step into our full body scanner. We call it the duplicator. Uh, it takes a split second, snaps 54 images. We convert that to a high-res 3D model and uh, send it to our 3D printing facility where we 3D print the lifelike replica and then we ship it directly to your door. So full body scanners can sound invasive. So what exactly is the duplicator? It's relatively simple, actually. It's 54 cameras positioned at all sorts of different angles and they all go off at the exact same moment. Uh, so you, you're actually, once you step out of the duplicator, actually able to look at all of your different images, make sure you're happy with your smile, with your pose. And from there, if you're happy with it, we use our proprietary software that converts it into the 3D model. So not invasive at all, just 2D images. So since it is just a split second, it's easy to do pets or kids. Exactly. And those are the things that are very, very popular. You know, pet, things that move, pets, kids, they're really, you know, people have a, a, obviously a very strong emotional connection to those things. And that's what people are really coming in here for. They're capturing these really special moments in time. What are some of the more out of the box things that people have done in the duplicator or have decided to get replicated since it's not just limited to people? We get all sorts of fun, crazy poses. <laughs> <laughs> um, people come in with, you know, with crazy, with animals and obviously dogs, cats are really popular, but you also, we've seen a giant guinea pig and snakes and things like that. You know, we have, uh, we certainly have our share of people who want to come in and do a, a naked do, um, <laughs> or people in you know fun dance poses or with crazy accessories. People just they have a lot of fun in the scanner, and and really the replicas are all about really showing your personality. Dupe's technology seems like it has a lot of potential uses. What immediate and future applications do you envision? Yeah, I mean the concept is really all about mass customization. The concept of three D printing, being able to create products that are specific to the individual customer. You know, the, these figures are just one application of Dube's scanning technology. And ultimately, what we're doing is we're taking a scan and creating a digital version of you. And in this case, we're printing it out into a replica. But those digital applications are, are endless. You can uh, be your digital self in a virtual world and you know, be yourself in a video game or try on clothes online. So how big can these get? Can you print a life-size Dube? Yeah, our standard size goes up to 14 inches, but we do everything up and up to life size. Even the smallest ones are really amazing. They really capture a lot of detail. But at, you know, as they get up in different sizes, there's sort of different different feelings and different responses. And you know, we've done a, a few life size around the world. Some exciting ones in, in Germany of uh, Ronaldo, the soccer player. Um, we do you know, two, three footers as well. So obviously the tubes are amazing, but where did this technology start? What was the initial intention? So it was developed in, the, the scanning technology was developed in Germany. Um, and they were actually using it for medical purposes at first, scanning stroke and cancer patients, 3D printing, facial implants, prosthetics, things like that. Um, and then there, it went through a series of other applications that we were using it for, from architecture and archeology, span and then just one day opened up a, a this type of store in Dusseldorf and it really sort of took off from there so we expanded it um, around the world. So before I step into the duplicator to get duped, what exactly does dupe mean? You're sort of putting a, a brand to the experience so you can actually get duped in the duplicator and receive your your very own dupe. So should we go do it? Let's do it. Let's get duped. Shall we step into the duplicator? Let's do it. All right. Three, two, one. So we can check out the pictures from the duplicator right over here. So basically it's 54 images taken from all different angles. We first turn them into a 3D file. So we use our proprietary software, converts the 2D into 3D images, and then we send them to the production center to be 3D printed. My scan is on its way to the production center, so we're gonna head over there now to see it come to life. So 
we're here at the Do Production Facility, and this is Johnny. She is the production coordinator here, and she's gonna walk us through the whole process. So, what is step one? Step one is we take your file from when you were scanning the duplicator. Uh, we set it up so it prints in this printer. It prints thousands of layers combining the resin polymer powder, and it mixes with binder and ink to create your figure. So it's actually printing it in color? Yes. How many dupes are actually in this powder right now? Uh, probably, roughly like 25 I'd say. It all depends on the sizes. So step one is with the powder, what do we do? We're gonna excavate it out of this powder using a vacuum hose essentially. Cool, so should we get Let's started on that? Why is it that it prints with all of this white powder? Well, it's printing in all of these layers and in order for all the figures to stay exactly where they need to be so they don't break during printing, it fills every void in space. It's sort of acting as like a cushion between the other yeah. dudes. And as we pull them out, this, this table keeps moving up. Oh, so it's moving up so that you can vacuum out the layers and so the dupe will rise to the surface? Yeah. And what happens to all of the excess powder? Does it go back and recycle? Exactly, it goes back into the printer and we reuse it for the next build. So first I'm gonna find your feet. I feel like this is like digging for a fossil, yeah. almost. <laughs> I know that your pose has one foot behind it, and there's the other one. So now you're loose enough to pull out. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna lift it up, okay. and then we're gonna you're gonna hold it vertical, and I'm gonna suck the rest of the powder out of the bottom. Perfect. Now you've got a heel, so it's a little, a little fragile. Tricky. The anticipation. Yeah. So now, next we're gonna go straight over to here, okay. the cleaning chamber. So you can just bring it here and set it down. So we put it, place it in this cleaning chamber and we're going to essentially blow off all the powder. And we ha at this point we have to be really careful if there is anything fragile like glasses or you have a heel that's really fragile or sometimes people have fingers that are sticking out it can blow right off, so it's a part. It's another really tricky part of the process that so you have to be very careful with. Oh my god, this is so weird. This is where it like, really comes to life, huh? Yeah. Do you need to be careful to get like every little nook and cranny? Yeah, we do try to get everything off in this part of the process because it can show up when we dip. Oh, okay. It'll just harden everything that's on here. Yeah, exactly. Does the white powder harden clear? It will harden white. It's also taking the powder that's coming off of it and recycling it back into the printer. There you are. Oh my god, that's crazy. <laughs> so we're gonna do the final cleaning process. It's funny, you can see close up sort of it has like rings, almost like a yeah, tree. Exactly. That's where all the layers yeah, printed. All the layers, exactly. So just because of the color. You want to make sure that it's all blended. Are there any colors that work better than others as far as printing? I wouldn't say color, but I would say prints come out looking really fantastic. I think you'll see your shoe because you have this um, leopard print. It will look really amazing. It's so weird to sort of see yourself in 3D. Yeah, absolutely. It, I kind of imagine it's the same as when people first got photographs. And yeah, sure. Like, That's what I look like. <laughs> So when you're sanding that, does it take away any of the detail? Because I noticed there's there's very small details in here, like the pleats and the hair. Obviously, we just do minimal sanding, so it doesn't take away much of the detail. With skin tone, um, you won't really you won't see any of the detail disappear. It's funny to think, like when you see all of these dupes in here, that it's a real person somewhere. That yeah. <laughs> when you say a doll in a store, it's not a person, but these are all somebody. Right. So now we can go dip it. So what is the solution made out of? It's essentially a glue. Okay, so this will bring out all the colors, it's gonna harden it. Exactly. And once it cures, it's totally done. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. I'm a little nervous. Yeah. That is a huge color difference. Yeah, this is, I love the colors on this one. Is it essentially just getting it wet? Yeah, it's saturating it, so it's going actually into the walls of the figure. Okay, so there is some sort of chemical reaction that's happening there? Yeah, it's hardening all of the powder and materials that came together to make your figure. Wow, does it stay shiny like this? Or does no, it, it will now? dry, um, depending on how much of this we put on, it'll dry more matte. Okay. Um, we do actually, there's a finishing process, we just spray it all over with a matte spray evens all of the surfaces. 
Here you are. This is really weird. In a cool way. Yeah. And so we just do a little bit of dabbing to get any excess off because if there's any dripping or pooling, it will dry very thick and you'll see the glue. Is it weird to dry me off when I'm standing next to you? <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to be a little challenging to dry this way, but I think you're gonna stand a little drip dry. So now, with, especially when there's drapery, you don't want the glue to fill in yeah, those grooves. Yeah, you're gonna see where it's gonna start pooling and dripping. There you are. We'll make sure there's nothing that needs to be fixed or altered or touched up. And then it will, we'll spray it with matte spray and then it ships out. So I assume everybody that works here at some point gets duped. What's their reaction usually when they see their dupe? I think, I think it's the same as yours. It is weird to see yourself 3D.